All right, guys, just out of sheer curiosity and uh, not really caring what happens to this old 200,000 mile uh, Suburban. Hopefully I can hear it's super windy. It's getting heat soaked really bad because it's one stock. I'm gonna take no mods at all. Uh, I had it on 93 for a little while and I was gonna start learning how to tune on it, but I couldn't add any timing to it without it spark knocking more than it already did from the factory. Factory spark knock would range from anywhere from two to four degrees knock retard. And that's just, you know, cause it's a really heavy truck. So when you fully load it, it'll have to resort to the low octane tables, even though it was on 93. Um, so I'm gonna do the, uh, probably the dumbest thing you could do is put ethanol right in my truck, non-flex fuel. I know it could have been debatched, but it's not debatched. This is a base model, 5.3 Suburban. I don't know the exact model. I mean, trim, but it's a 5.3. Um, it's a 07, so it's 4L60, the worst gears possible. I put 22s. Um, but yeah, I'm at un just under a quarter tank. So I'm gonna put five gallons of E85. It should be around 70% in there with about six, seven gallons maybe of 93. So about it's gonna be about 50% flex added to that so i'm saying maybe 60 percent ethanol once it's blended i don't know because like i said it's not a flex fuel car it doesn't have a sensor it doesn't have nothing all i got is a laptop with hp tuners and just pcm's license so if it does not run obviously i can add some fuel but i'm just simply gonna see if this boosts the octane enough for me to get any timing in it now i'm doing this on the street just because it loads up a lot more on the street than it does on the dyno i don't take it on third gear on the dyno just because the drive shaft would be way all over hundreds of miles an hour and I'm not trying to throw a drive shaft under the dyno. But either way, there's way more weight um, street driving a Suburban than rolling on a dyno without, uh, you know, proper loading it. And I don't load it. I was doing inertial ramps and the truck made about 260 horsepower and 290 torque. And uh, I'm going to put this in there and see if I can add timing and maybe we'll re-dyno it. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, I don't recommend doing this to your bone stock non flex fuel Chevy, but we don't care and uh, we want a little more octane so we can deter knock and not have 12 degrees of knock retard. You heard it. I said two from stock, but I added 10 degrees just to see it does it increase knock if we're not good. If it was false knock, it would not really increase um, or we would start seeing a little bit more. It was not, it went straight to 12 degrees knock retard from two degrees knock retard. So those 10 degrees literally made it ping that much more. Uh, so we're gonna see how much does this mount, five gallons into the six gallons, maybe quarter tank, uh, bring up the octane, see if any of the knock goes away. If it doesn't, obviously I'm gonna pull the timing out, but these things are pretty smart at pulling timing on their own. So we're gonna keep an eye on knock retard and go for a test drive. All right, guys, we are scanning with MPVI-3 and we are data logging with the VCM scanner. And right here, you can see we maxed out our knock retard gauge. Uh, I was commanding 32 degrees, but we only got, or I was commanding something, but we only got 22 because we had 12 degrees of knock retard. Um, I plotted all these ignition tables. They're gonna go away. Plotted all these knock retard tables you can see Heavy amounts of knock up there in the high RPM or mid range. No, that's high RPM <laughs> for this thing. Mind you guys, I'm used to tuning Hondas um, on ethanol that don't even knock. So this is new to me, but it's really cool to see that a stock computer can monitor this stuff. Um, but I'm gonna start it. As y'all saw, we just poured stuff in the tank and we're gonna see, does it even start correcting at idle? So the fuel trims are gonna go crazy if it uh, leans it out. So I'll probably have you already hold the laptop. Well, well, we can cruise it there. We're gonna see if we can make it to the gas station or what it even does. Um, trying to, right now it's gonna start getting the ethanol. It went from, so it went from under a quarter tank to about three, uh, a third of a tank. So it's almost 50-50, 93 and, and in flex uh, E85. So we're probably gonna go up to, I wanna say E50 maybe e60 meaning like 50 60 percent ethanol content on a non flex fuel <laughs> now i asked i asked the local tuner 
how much E85 can these non flex fuel trucks run? It's thinking I'm gonna run straight uh, pump E85 and get a pound, probably 70, 75% ethanol, right? And he said, data log your injectors, if they're, they're under 70% duty cycle, you got room for a full flex pump tool uh, tune, right? So it means I got about 30% injector pulse width to go and it'll still drive. It might even do some full throttle pulls. And he said, read data log it, get it, your air fuels on point. And if you're not completely leaning out, then you're good to go. But this is a bone stock truck. I'm not saying you could do that with an intake or headers or what do they do to these things like manifolds, throttle bodies and all that stuff. Any airflow mods further leans you out. So I'm in the safety margin that if it's good, I'm at 85, 90% injector duty cycle on flex uh, pump E85 whatever's there because there's no sensor here um we're gonna see what the short term's doing here in a second it hasn't really gotten through the the whole fuel pump assembly so it's gotta drive around a bit and uh you already will hold the laptop and y'all be seeing what these uh short term fuel trims are doing normally the truck from factory has to pull or add about two to four percent um sometimes more in certain weather but it always hit the target. I've data logged it and it used to always hit stoic. Um, now I didn't change the stoic or anything. I didn't change anything yet, guys. We're just gonna see if knock retard goes down and how it drives as, as far as fuel trims and knock. This is un, untuned for what I just put in the tank. Um, as of now, it still has, I'm still requesting about 32 degrees. Uh, it's not gonna get it. If it's peening, it's gonna have knock retard. But like I said, I don't care. I'm just gonna let it rip, see what happens. Basically, if you put uh, E85 in a bone stock Chevy. We'll take the back roads in case it stalls out. It's gonna take a little bit for that ethanol to hit it, hit the actual fuel system. Well, you can see right here, you already said you know where to film every now and then. This is your short term bank one, and that's your short term bank two. And then it's going to start adding, it's going to stop compounding long term uh, fuel trims on bank one, bank two. And already, it's already giving me five to six percent short term, so I already know it's starting to lean out. It never used to cruise at six percent. That's just narrow bands trying to uh, compensate for the extra fuel flow that ethanol. Uh, requires um, there's some tricks that people do for uh, switching to ethanol but I really don't know um, how to do any of those tricks other than tuning the actual fuel map but um, you're starting to request a lot find out Ten. correcting 10% 10 already yeah yeah it feels a little sluggish already when you're running a uh, when you're relying heavily on fuel correction it's gonna feel sluggish because it's trying to hit that commanded uh, air fuel value we're gonna get this fuel to mix up nice and good. And uh, we might even cruise back to the pump and just top it off. So we're gonna go to the nearest flex pump and see what happens, cause if it doesn't reach, if we don't get to 40%, I don't know if it can add 40% short term, but if we don't get all over say 20, 30% uh, fuel corrections, I'm gonna top it off once we get to the gas station if we make it there without it bogging out or whatever but we're gonna see y'all gonna see us drive to the store it's gonna be a little while maybe we'll skip but uh i just want to film this whole process what happens when you just put ethanol in a non-flex fuel truck um, and again it's only about six gallons 93 that was in the tank and then i just put that five gallon jug and that was about 80 percent ethanol content Whatever they end up at when they mix, I don't really know. I'm literally going based off the short term and long term fuel correction to give me an idea how much it's leaning out. <clears throat> the right way would be to get a wide band on this thing and uh, start dialing in the VE map, but I'm uh, I'm gonna do that at a later date when I know it's on full flex at the pump. Like I wanna be at the highest content before I even start rewriting the map, fuel map, just so I don't have to do 100 rewrites but let's see how, how far our short-term correction gets us with our narrow bands. These trucks are pretty good, but you can see it's already leaving in 13%. It was so 14 that's, earlier. That's long-term. This truck already learned that it needs that much at all times. 
to be close to stoic not only 13 10 percent short and 13 so you're already looking at over 20 percent uh, additional fuel to try to meet the, the stoic geometry so it's looking at the pump gas number so it's shooting for it's shooting for one lambda or 14.7 air fuel if it feels on the gasoline scale um, I didn't rescale anything so it still thinks it's, it's thinking okay there is a very lean mixture as far as gasoline scale goes so that's what it's trying to target but yeah we're gonna try to get to the nearest flex pump and see what happens all right guys this is about 10 miles of driving uh, about 10 miles of driving and she's already uh, compounding about 25 percent corrections long-term nine short-term so we're doing about 23 24 percent uh additional fuel via the narrow bands correction um so i mean it still drives perfectly fine but we are gonna top it off here in a second still driving fine just dumping in a jug of ethanol to boost now we're noticing we have not hit any knock retard at all yet we haven't done no pulls or nothing yet we're live uh -huh. Alright guys, I'm going to see if it'll do a second gear pull. Might just mean cut, so I don't know. If it bucks, I'll have to let off. to the gas station so we're gonna fill it up it's a uh, it all the way home here it was uh like 17 to 20 percent uh long-term fuel trim so she needs a lot of fuel added to her but i'm gonna top it off and see if we can make it back to the shop and keep making a request what it can do if we make it back then we'll start doing a little bit of tweaks to the map um, or i might just throw 30 percent at it and just see if it uh drives a little better like that because I'm about to top it off with ethanol here in a second. <laughs> E85. What are you doing, my friend? I don't even want to say it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're at the flex fuel pump. He ain't lying. Look, we pump it. We pump it. And, uh, we're topping off the Suburban non-flex fuel truck The only thing this dude's done is put wheels in. <laughs> and that literally adds to the weight. So all I did was add weight to the, to the truck. Um, hopefully nobody gets mad at me keep calling it a truck. I know it's an SUV, but uh, this is my Tacuache. This is the work truck right here. Yeah, this is the, the baby hauler and the tool hauler. Um, it's, it's trailered the, uh, I don't know if it was the hatch. I trailered something once, but the transmission hated it. It's the four speed, the four L60. And it looks like it's about to click here in a second. So 20, 
five gallons of ethanol. So that means we have a pretty high percent. Yeah, it should be. But that means we also use like five gallons just to get here from like 15 miles away. Or... Yeah. Yeah, so 20 gallon, 25 gallons of ethanol in an, okay, let me rephrase that. 25 gallons of flex fuel in a non-flex fuel truck. Um, the five gallon jug and 20 gallons. Y'all see we just got it straight out of the E85, the flex fuel pump. And right here, you can see, where's it say right here? Contains up to 85% ethanol. The pumps during uh, winter almost never have 85%. Even in the summer, the highest we usually get here in uh, down south is uh, about 80%. Um, I've never seen much more than that, unless you get lucky. But yeah, we don't know what it's at because we're not a non we're a non fuel flex fuel truck. But let's see how she runs. All right, guys, just idling. We're uh, running 10% long-term fuel trim. That might be already what it remembered. Um, but yeah, we'll see what she ends up having to run up to short-term and long-term wise if, while we're trying to make it to the shop. She's still running good though. I mean, for fuel, just fueling up a non-flex truck, it's not terrible. You recording? Uh-huh. All right, guys, I could tell she's using a lot of correction. It's running kind of sluggish. It's, it's hiccuping a little bit. Can't really hear it, but I could tell that it's relying on all fuel correction. And it'll kind of oscillate the, the injectors a little too much to run perfectly smooth. But yeah, she's, uh, she's going to tally up as much long-term fuel trim as she can to run close to uh, as close to a stoic lambda as it was programmed for for gasoline because again this is not a flex fuel truck so it has no idea there's any alcohol or ethanol content to blend or to uh, multiply the fuel um, if we don't make it back if it's not if it's too lean to make it back to the shop we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull over and tell it that there's some alcohol in it percent long term <laughs> so topping off your chevy it can correct but it's gonna be sluggish not gonna be right running 28 percent long term fuel correction we definitely need a right we definitely need to add some fuel to the uh tune so I'm, we'll be right back and hopefully we make it to the shop <laughs> yeah all right, guys, this is not tuning by any means, but I want to know what is this computer's maximum capability telling it that there is flex fuel? That's what I'm going to tell it. I'm telling it there is flex fuel in the tank, but I do not have a fuel sensor. So I don't know why there's a virtual option. But look, if you have a sensor, boom, it'll get the actual reading of uh, ethanol content. If you don't, you can still enable it. I don't know if any cars come with this. I don't know why it's an option, but I'm gonna see what does virtual flex fuel do. Um, when you hover over it, it says, if enabled, a fuel composition sensor is fitted. That is false for us, because we have no sensor. Um, if it is disabled, virtual fuel composition calculations are used. So that's telling me it's just gonna still try to use some kind of correction. And um, fuel composition calculations, I don't know where they come from. I don't even know if they're in the map. Um, as far as I know, they're not, but I haven't also really looked in there too much. If there is, I'll uh, try to pull over later and do that. But um, as far as I know, I'm going to have to just retune the fuel map. But we will let y'all know. Did we? Hmm. This. <laughs> okay, now you can go ahead. So far, it seems to be dialed in on the fuel trims. My boy worked his magic behind the laptop. 
got everything semi dialed. We don't have no I'm air. Good within five yeah, with the, yeah, it's all within five, but we don't have no AFR, so we really can't dial it down to the T. But she's she's running good. Put E85 flex fuel. I don't know. We're going to fuck around and find out. Same timing it used to have before. Zero net. Damn, 37 degrees. It used to have what? No, there it goes, too. But that's like way up there in it RPM. Went from what? It went from 12. It went from pulling 12 degrees to almost pulling the yeah. Because of octane. We were octane limited, guys, on 93. And that's because we don't even have the proper injectors right now. We don't even know what the watt air fuel is. All we got this thing doing is cruising and driving on flex fuel. Literally, this car is not a flex fuel truck. We went to the pump and filled up with flex fuel. We uh, changed some injector scaling to let it know that we do have ethanol. We don't have 93 anymore. Uh, this stoichiometry is a little different. So happy now cruising i mean it didn't take much it took like three revisions and uh yeah. we're cruising and mobbing out just the way it was bone stock but now we don't have not yeah that's like basically it was pinging everywhere with 93 because of the heat soak and just because i'm re I'm, I'm requesting a lot of timing i'm not gonna lie and that it probably doesn't even need that much but it's literally the test we wanted to do so you can see right here when the short, when the trims are bouncing like that, it's literally at stoic. I mean, just like right there. On the money. Yeah. So we're in the green, but we will discuss later that we didn't have enough injector. Uh, well, he could probably show y'all the injector duty cycle. I tried to do a pull. It's gonna be maxed out. of knock and uh, the computer's gonna be happy too not having to always knock retard so i'm a happy camper i didn't know if it was possible um i asked the tuner that does this all the time he's a gm tuner he told me if you're under 70 percent injector he's like do it uh, we were right at 70 so as y'all see the injectors are maxed out this is a stock 5.3 injector so i'm gonna do the ls3 injectors soon and uh dial in the fuel trim so that way it's not 100 percent duty cycle because that's not optimal for power either yeah, first mod on the Suburban. I'm happy with it. All right, guys. We made it back to the shop. And we topped off on uh, pump E85 or flex fuel. And with two, three iteration uh, revisions to the, uh, to the calibration, we are within 2 to 3% fuel correction. I mean, this thing cruising is literally zero. You can see those. I mean, the, the air fuel is on point. Cruising. Uh, full throttle, we don't really have enough injector to be uh, doing watt pulls enough. It's maxed out right now, but we could. it could be rich. If I leaned it out, might come back into the 90s, but uh, I'm gonna, just going to wait until I put my LS3 injectors to do any kind of power pulls, and maybe we'll get it on the dyno, and you guys will see what happens from there. Uh, if there's gains to be made on a stock truck. As far as I'm concerned, I just wanted to get rid of the knock retard, guys. We were doing pull after pull with damn near zero knock retard coming from negative 12 degrees. I mean, the 93 tune that I had in it wasn't that aggressive, but it just can't. On stock truck, you cannot request much more than stock without it peeing more than it would already. Because they already peeing, right? They already have knock retard. 
and often run off the low octane table. So now I'm gonna be able to run in the high octane table a lot more and way less knock retard. That's really the only reason I did this. This is not a race truck. I'm not trying to like max out my horsepower or nothing. Um, but I would like to not be detonating. So yeah, when the goals were met within one trip. We went to fuel up, pulled over three times and voila, fuel trims on point and it's a non-flex truck that simply went to go fill up on the 85.